Beers with Chad. Hey everybody, what's up? Chad Wesley Smith here. On this week's Beers with Chad, uh, we're not drinking any beer because it was the morning when we filmed it, but uh, I'm joined by my friend Miles Burris. Uh, several years ago, Juggernaut got to handle Miles' combine prep as he prepared for the NFL Combine. as a linebacker coming out of San Diego State. Ended up being drafted in the fourth round by the Oakland Raiders. Uh, had a good but short career there, cut, uh, cut short by a uh, series of knee injuries and, and kind of ongoing issues there with some bone on bone issues. So today I talked to Miles about his NFL career, uh, the psychology he brought towards uh, dealing with that injury, um, and then his transition to his post NFL life, uh, in which he's made a really successful career for himself as an actor, uh, seeing him on shows on CBS, on Showtime. Uh, and then we also get his thoughts on the 2018 Oakland Raiders and how they're going to do this season. So make sure subscribe, uh, to the, to the channel, subscribe to the feed and, uh, enjoy the episode. All right, so uh, here with my buddy, Miles Burris. How you doing, my man? Good. <laughs> so as people may not be <clears throat> too uh, familiar with you, uh, you were drafted in 2011? 12. 2012, mm -hmm. fourth round pick yep. by the Raiders. Uh, t tell us a little bit about your, your NFL career. Yeah, so I um, got drafted, like you said, fourth round, the Raiders, 2012. Uh, came in and kind of became an immediate starter. There were some injuries, but um, uh, be started out as a first and second down linebacker and then earned my way into being an every down linebacker after, I think, game four. Um, started my, pretty much started every game there when I was healthy. My second year, I had a knee injury and was out um, for probably, I think, 10 games on the pup list. and came back and played some special teams, but then came back and started at um, middle linebacker my third year. And what, what was the injury ultimately that, uh, that ended your career? Yeah, it was my right knee, a lot, a lot of wear and tear. Yeah, yeah, we got to the point where I would go and um, try to plant my leg and just wouldn't push my body anywhere and uh, kind of knew I had to hang it up. I chased it for a while after that, that mm -hmm. injured year in 2015 and tried to get back and had some bites, but people were just hung up on my injury history and they wouldn't do it. So, so right now teams are they're they're in the the dog days of summer, the train, NFL training camp, mm -hmm. you know, hard knocks, all that, all that good stuff. As you look back, particularly about your rookie year, what was like the the most shocking thing to you about becoming an NFL player? Maybe the most unexpected challenge you faced. Unexpected challenge. Yeah, let me think. I know I probably got a way better answer if I had some time on it. I just can't <laughs> think. Um, I think, honestly, training camp, I think that was right after the CBA. Mm -hmm. So there was no more two-a-days. And in college, they're getting away with murder. I mean, it's, it's two-a-days, but legitimate, you know, three-hour practices, full pads. And, and so I remember coming to camp, and the learning curve is, is way more intense. So that slapped me in the face. It's like trying to take a sip from a fire hose. But as from a physical standpoint, I was cool with it. I mean, it wasn't too bad. It was uh, one practice and then maybe a walkthrough. And uh, I remember thinking, oh, this isn't too bad. This is easy as far as physically goes. But, um, yeah, I think just kind of uh, learning being under the pressure and having to learn on the fly and, and learn an entire defense and make checks and do all that stuff, that was, that was the biggest shock because I came from a system, a 3-3-5 three, three, with Rocky Long, where I was more the edge rusher and it was see ball, get ball. And once the play's called, that's it. Just go do it. And, and I loved that. And I was always better in a position where I could just be instinctive and reactive. And you were always a, a big weight room guy, and, and you did your combine prep with, with Juggernaut back in the day. Yeah. And, you know, that meathead side of you is probably a, a lot of the reason why <laughs> we're still in touch, you know, seven, year, yeah. seven years later. Mm -hmm. the, uh, so what were some of your, your best weight room numbers? Yeah. Um, I squatted 650 pounds and... I was like 17 years old, and I never tried to beat it again. I Is did this it like again. a good squat or like a high squat? Say that again. Is this like a good legit squat or a high squat? As it, is, is that like is a, where the bar is or where my where I go? Well, my depth was good. Okay. Yeah, my depth was good. Oh, my yeah. our coach in high school taught us right. Uh, he it was a rep max system though, uh -huh. so you put a certain amount on the bar. I think I did like 500 for 10, and okay. somehow that equated out maybe to 650. Yeah, yeah. I did it again in college, but I think I was close. I had more more weight on the bar, but it was around the same. Um, 
but yeah, I remember I used to always put the, put the bar pretty low on my back and I would, you know, really lean into my hips and all that, but um, couldn't do it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then at bench, the most I ever did, I did a single at 455. And um, cleans, I, I never did past freshman year in, in uh, college, the our strength coach after that, never did them. And, um, it was more of a rep system when we got into the league, so I think I did 325 was the most I did there. So as, as you look at the the training that you did, and you were, you know, really strong, fast, and you know, ran ran in like the four sixes, four fives mm-hmm. uh, at the combine, big vertical, 37, 38 inch vertical. As you looked at the the training that happened in the NFL and the guys who were being successful, you know, five years in their career, ten years in their career. Were they still training really, really heavy, or, or what kind of things were they doing? So I'd, I'd say there's two different kind of guys. There, there was some of the guys that um, they were so talented, and and they kept with some sort of a program. But it, that, you know, it was it was like their talent was going to make them last mm-hmm. a certain amount of amount of time. And then there was the other guys that they lasted a long time because of the work. Um, had I not had my injury, I would have been that guy. I mean, I was always, I always felt like I had to work way harder than everybody else to get the results that I wanted, and I was willing to do it, and I felt like that was my advantage. Um, but, you know, a lot of the guys, I think my biggest advice to anybody going to the league is if, do what works for you. Like, everybody gets there, and then they think, now that I'm here, i got to go spend a bunch of money on some guru because he must be better than what I, you know, the uh-huh. nuts and bolts that got me here. And I think that screws a lot of guys, you know, because then they're not staying strong. They're not doing, you know, the, the core things that make you a better football player and keeping your top speed and, and changing, you know, just all those little things. Um, the, uh, and doing all the stuff, taking care of their body. That seems like the, the big thing. I, I was at Rams training camp a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I got there 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, and Dominican Sue was finishing his, his workout. Mm. Like, he came in, does his own thing, you know, at 6 in the morning. Dang. And then he's, he was getting stretched out by the strength coaches, and then kind of in there with the while well, the offensive guys were lifting, he was just kind of in there watching them over things and yeah. and then he was in the hyperbaric chamber, wow. then he did the walkthroughs, then he was getting massaged, then he was you yeah. know in there with the defensive lift and then then getting more treatment and and not injured um, but so I think that that's the you know the true professional yeah. type of things and I even saw that in my own career throwing the shot put powerlifting. When I was 18, freshman in, in college, like you didn't go to the training room until you were hurt, mm. rather than you know going yeah. preventatively before yeah. that. But as as you looked at at life in the in the NFL, it, what was the the toughest part from like a week to week basis? You think definitely my third year because I was moved to middle linebacker, the Mike, and like I said, it's my first year. I started at <clears throat> outside linebacker. It was, it was the will, I was off the ball, but it was a lot more instinctive. You're not making all the checks, you're, you're kind of getting up, lining up, and, and being reactive mm-hmm. and instinctive. I was never actually an X's and O's guy. I was able to pretty much learn what I have to do and do that. And my third year, I was thrust into having to be the mic. Um, and I have to make all the checks, I have to call the plays, I've got the mic in my ear, and um, you know I have to be completely mentally present with all the X's and O's and know what everybody's doing. And that was just like far outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. My, my attention span is, is pretty <laughs> quick. And I was always like, what made me a great player was being able to line up and just instinctively get to the ball. I didn't even know what stacking the five technique meant or the stacking the three and on the run. I just somehow knew, okay, there's space here. The running back's gonna cut back here and I'm gonna make a tackle. And I never understood the X's and O's very well. Um, and so that was definitely the toughest part. And week to week, the entire game plan can shift. Like you, the main call you're calling, it could be different from week to week. Uh, the checks are different based on personnel and who the big receiver is and where we're going to double. And um, and I had to be in the middle of all that, kind of directing the traffic, and that was that was rough. Tough, toughest guy to tackle that I play. Oh, uh, definitely Marshawn Lynch. I would say Marshawn, Marshawn Lynch. Money. Marshawn Lynch and then Doug, Doug Martin, and I'm not just saying that because they're both on the Raiders now. I'm saying that because I played both of them in a different times and was having a was having a rough day on those ones there. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm sure a lot of people would. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, yeah I would agree with yeah. you on on Marshawn. Yeah. yeah, he and I, Marshawn and I, were the same year in school at Cal, mm. and he actually did track a little bit. He r- would run the 60 meters indoors nice. and uh, the four by 100 on the outdoor 
team, so I get to be around him. We, we didn't hang out a lot, but yeah. uh, but uh, always a special place for the the king of Oakland. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's awesome. So the, cool. uh, Doug Martin, the muscle hamster. Yeah, yeah, that dude's a tank. He is. No, he really is a tank. And I played him at Boise too, but there was something. You know, he was different his rookie year. He yeah. was he was tough to tackle. The uh, so as as you dealt with this this knee injury, and of course injuries are. Yeah, any any sport, you know, powerlifting, weightlifting, our kind of main audience, football, whatever, that's going to be a part of things. And and I think how people mentally respond to being injured, and and the rehab process is is huge. You know, as as you dealt with this injury, and I, I remember a, as you were dealing with it, having dinner yeah. uh, up with with you and your wife in in Oakland. Mm-hmm. What's going through your head as as you think about? Yeah, sort of the mortality of your football career and all that stuff as you were going through the injury. Yeah. No, I lied earlier. That was the hardest part yeah. of, of my entire career. That was um, because my, my goal going in was always to be, I want to be, you know, play 10 or more years. I want, I want to do this until I can't do it, until the wheels fall off. I love this. Like all I ever wanted to do my first day strapping on pads was be a professional football player. And so I think without trying to and without even realizing it subconsciously, I'd, it'd become an identity to an, to an extent. And so when my knee started giving out on me, it was just like I was doing everything. Like on off days when guys were relaxing or just hitting the training, I was traveling to Utah, traveling to, to um, Colorado, all, o- all over the place, and uh, Arizona. I was seeing these different specialists just getting injections, tr- trying different therapies, doing whatever it took because I was desperate to fix my knee and I couldn't fix my knee. And um, you know, I could hardly get through practice. I'd have to take a bunch of uh, anti-inflammatories and painkillers to, to get through what I was doing. But I was miserable because I just saw it as like a, t- a ticking time bomb. Like I was living my dream every day, but it was a nightmare because I saw that this is limited now and there's nothing I can do to control it. And I was always able to kind of control things like being a meathead, being that gym rat, you know, mm-hmm. where I can put in more work than anybody else and it's going to get me here and it gives me, you know, more hope that, that I've got a little bit of control over this. And then when this happened, it's like I could feel it, like there was no, nothing I could do about it. I was trying everything. I was putting thousands of dollars into uh, trying to get this thing figured out, uh, putting all my, it was on my mind all day. And at that point in my life, I wasn't really ready to deal with it mentally. I didn't know how. The, uh, and you mentioned you know, having to do like painkillers and, and getting cortisone shots, I'm sure, all that kind of stuff. I mean, how, how prevalent and maybe problematic do you think that is in NFL culture? Yeah, I think it probably varies team to team. And I know they put in a lot of guidelines now um, as far as limiting that. Mm-hmm. Right? And it has to be really well documented and things like that. But for me, there was times where it's like I, I absolutely I had to. You know, I could hardly gimp through practice sometimes and then get to the game and uh, I had to find a way to not feel it. And I, I had a really intense uh, and structured pregame. I'd get there four hours early and, and kind of do everything just to get enough blood flow and get mm-hmm. enough bend and, and all those things. Uh, but it's, it's good now uh, because I'm not pounding on it every day. I can do everything I need to do and uh, it's good to go. So you're doing your own stunts now? Yeah, I, I could do that. I could figure it out. <laughs> Honestly, my first day on the job, I, they kept coming up to me after every scene. I had to like fall onto this mat, you know, and fall out wow. of camera onto this mat, onto my knees, and, and they were like, hey, is, "Is that okay?" After every shot, I'm like, "I'm used to taking on a 350 <laughs> pound pulling guard with a head of steam, and I'm falling on a soft mat." Like, yeah. is Hollywood a little soft? Like, what's going on here? Yeah. So, so now you're you're Miles Burris, the actor. Mm-hmm. Um, what? Tell me about the transition, post football life, deciding to become, to, deciding to pursue acting. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I always knew I was going to give acting a real shot um, in college. Once football was done, I knew I'd give it a shot. Um, but football was was the number one. I, I started watching movies and stuff, and just kind of thought that'd be a really cool career. But I don't know if I'm good at it or if I would like it. You just figured uh, like I'm so handsome. No. <laughs> It's a no. rare it's a rare time where I'm not the most handsome man on the podcast, but that's fine. Miles, go ahead. That no. can be you today. No, it's it's just fun. <laughs> so I, I chased football for probably two years after uh, I was released in twenty fifteen, injured, so I couldn't get back that season. I, it just my knee wouldn't go and then I got to a point where I could have played again, took a bunch of workouts, had a bunch of uh, bites and contracts and then a few minutes later I didn't because they said oh the trainers vetoed it your medical mm. history this that and the other so my last bout I was with a mini camp with the Vikings in 2017 
And uh, I could just see on film, like, all my injuries weren't allowing me to play yeah. at the level I needed to. And I came back, and I was down, man. I was, I was on the couch. I was just really upset because I really felt I was meant to play again. And um, when I couldn't, it was just like, what's next? This is what I've done since fifth grade. Um, but Jenna had knew about my, my future aspirations to, to give acting a shot, and she kind of got me up off the couch and said, you know, let's just get some headshots of you. Let's get you up on the websites. Let's uh, get you in an acting class. And she got me moving. And I loved it right away. Didn't she say, like, like I'll give you one week to sulk on the couch? She gave me a day, dude. She <laughs> gave me a day. It was the next day. I was just, she saw I could come out there. I'm all down. She's like, no, no, no. We're getting up, dude. Let's, we're not doing this. You know? <laughs> Football's done, so let's move on to the next thing. But it's what I needed. It was that 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 um, movement that I needed in, in the, into something else. And I ended up booking my very first in-person audition for a, um, this big-budget pilot as a guest star. And as soon as I got to set, it was like my first day in pads in fifth grade. It was like I, I never looked back to football. I called her. I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. I love this. And, um, yeah, just uh, it's been incredible so far. And where, where are you, you know, if you can look five years down the road, ten years down the road, what would be your aspirations in, in Hollywood and acting? Yeah, I'd like to be um, like a superhero, a Marvel or a DC character or um, an action hero. I think that's kind of the path I want to go down. Um, I think I have an ability to do both comedy and drama, and that's something that would mix well in that genre. You kind of you see it a lot of the Marvel movies nowadays uh, have a have a good comedic element to mm -hmm. them as well, and um, that's that's the long term vision for me. I think we got to get you on Ballers. Get you, get you with the rock. Yeah, hook it up, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you got the connects, man. You, got, you know everybody. I don't know, I don't know if I have the rock connection. Well, you got like three de three degrees of separation on that one. Yeah. Rock, if you're watching, holler at my man Miles here. It's not as big as yours, but we can work with it. <laughs> Hollywood, you know the camera angles. Yeah, uh, and and you're still involved with the Raiders. Yeah, um, yeah, kind of always going to be in that Raiders family. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of changes for your team. Uh, John Gruden coming in. You were you were up there at training camp. So give me give me your impressions of 2018 season for the Raiders. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I got to meet John Gruden briefly, and he came and talked to the. Uh, it was an alumni weekend in Napa. Uh, we got to check out their practice and do some events and stuff. And he came and spoke to us. And one thing I uh, I can tell you, I've never been coached by him or. Uh, you know, you see the old highlights and stuff, but he has definitely a, a commanding presence to where. When he talks, everybody's dialed in. Everybody wants to hear what Coach has to say, and he's got um, just this this personality that that people love, you know. And, and they, from what I hear from the players and the people I talk to, it's like they they're, they're fully bought in. And, and one thing I know from uh, being at San Diego State and being with a losing program for two three years, and then getting in Brady Hoke and Rocky Long and, and all that staff, Aaron Wellman as the strength coach. It, the coaches really are incredibly important, like way more important than you knew. We always had the talent there, and then they came in, and now we're going to bowl games every year. It changed the traditions. And so I really believe that having the right coaches in place, and specifically that head coach that is that authoritative figure that people will run through a brick wall for and are totally bought in and have everybody on the same, you know, on the same level as a unit, I think that's everything because everyone knows the Raiders have the talent to be great, and I think he can bring it out of them. Uh, did you meet Deuce Gruden? No. So, uh, yeah, John Gruden's son, Deuce, is one of their assistant strength coaches. Oh, okay. And he uh, was junior world champion in powerlifting two years ago. Really? Yeah, in the IPF. Real short, little jacked blonde, blonde kid. I mean, looks nice. just like him. But I guess John Gruden the second. Is, sure, he's got a little piss and vinegar to him. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. The... Uh, well, yeah, that's so. Any any predictions? Record? Where are they going to finish? The AFC West. They're going to win the AFC West. All right. Yes. AFC West. I'm not biased at all. Yeah. Either. No bias here. Well, uh, Khalil Mack, I think, is heading out of town now. It looks like they're going to trade him. Probably. Is that is that the latest? That's that's what it looks like. Dang. Do I you, hope not. They need to pay the man. They got to keep him there. Yeah, he's he's pretty good. But uh, so what in in the acting world? Where can where can people? What have you been on? Where where can they see you? Yeah, so I think my biggest gig was um, CBS Code Black. I was a guest star there, a top of show guest star. So I'm one of the storylines throughout the show. Um, that was a lot of fun. I was a guest star on Teachers um, uh, on TV Land, um, and, and had a handful of other projects. But those are kind of the two most notable. What well, What was your character on Code Black? Code Black was a college football player and offensive lineman. Uh, I'm a little small for that, but that's Hollywood, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, you're so much bigger than all the other actors, yeah, probably. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, where I, I get in this uh, accident, a stage falls on me and a bunch of people at some dance, and uh, I get out, but yeah, I'm dealing with a lot of guilt issues and uh, surgeries and pain and, and um, a very so, feely, emotional thing. I, it was my first drama, but yeah. it, was, it was tons of fun because I got to see and meet, a, you know, Rob Lowe and, and uh, Louis Guzman and uh, William Allen Young and work with some of those guys and, and see them from take to take and you, you just learn so much yeah, being immersed in it. Do you just go full method acting on the no. on the surgery parts and you're like no. just draw on your own experiences? Yeah, I mean you draw on, <laughs> you draw on old experiences to, to get certain places but I, I mean... Can you cry I, on command? No, nah, I get a little glossy at them. Okay. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I've never actually cried in real life so it's a foreign thing to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's fun. It's I'm learning on the fly and all of this, and I love it. Awesome, man. Well, Miles Burris, uh, The Rock is going to be reaching out yep. soon. Future Captain America. I, I can see the Captain America type of thing for sure. Let's do it. Yeah, so uh, always a pleasure seeing you, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Thank you.